Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nitin Choda and welcome to this important episode of Ignition Time where I talk to you about what economists are saying. Economists are saying that continued unemployment boosts, continued unemployment benefits will be more valuable, will be more important in helping the economy recover than stimulus checks. Yes, you heard that right. I'm going to cover three things in this video. The first is why I'm personally in favor of this idea. Number two, exactly what the economists are saying. And I do believe there are times like these where the politicians should listen to the economists because normally they just tend to disregard the economists as you know these geeks and these nerds who just work on computers and work on numbers. I think the politicians should listen to the economists. And number three, I'll give you some surprising new information about the impact of unemployment benefits on the general population. I'll give you some data that's actually going to surprise you. So make sure you stick around till the end of the video. Now, if you're an existing subscriber, welcome. If you are a new subscriber, please consider subscribing below and please enable notifications so you get instant updates from me going forward and if you learn something new from this video I would really appreciate it if you click the like button because a lot of research goes into the planning the execution the editing and the launching of these videos so with that being said let's go ahead and get started why am I personally in favor of a continued unemployment boost to those who need it the most as opposed to just one-time stimulus checks one of the reasons for my financial success is that I didn't have to worry about the consistency of income. In my case, if you look at my homepage video, if you look at my background, I've got businesses, I've got rental properties that bring in consistent revenue. So for me, I personally don't have to worry about whether money is going to come in or not, even in the middle of an economic crisis. Now, now, I know that not everyone has that luxury, but what do we have? What does the average low wage earner and the middle income earner have? They have their jobs, which by the way, don't exist right now because millions of Americans, specifically the low wage earners and the middle income earners have lost their jobs. And number two, the consistency of income in a situation like this comes from unemployment benefits. So my point is when an individual knows they have consistent income coming in, not a one-time stimulus check, but consistent income, whether it's through your job, whether, you know, if you've lost your job, then, you know, that's gone. Um, and whether it's through unemployment benefits, if you do have unemployment benefits that are continuously paying you, then you are able to escape what I call the cycle of poverty. You're able to now start to make better decisions. You're able to start to make more responsible decisions. Will there be some individuals who, you know, take the money and play video games or waste the money or do things they're not supposed to do? Absolutely. There's waste. There's fraud in every system. But I'm talking about the 99% of individuals who will be helped with consistent unemployment benefits and a consistent unemployment boost and not just a one-time stimulus check. Remember, this study was about unemployment boosters doing more than stimulus checks. It wasn't about, you know, unemployment booster should happen and stimulus checks should not happen. This was a comparison and this was data from economists. So there you go. I've given you my personal opinion on what I think should happen because again, consistent income releases the pressure, releases the cloud of uncertainty, allows you to breathe easy, allows you to make decisions that are in your best interests, hopefully in the interests of those around you. It prevents you from doing things that could be potentially risky, that could be potentially harmful for you. So there you go. Now, let's listen to what economists had to say, because some economists had some pretty interesting things to say. So I'll link to this article uh, in the description below and I'll also show you the article on the screen. Economists estimate that a new $1.5 trillion pandemic relief package will be needed to stabilize the US economy with the most critical aspect of the funding uh, that should be allocated towards continued enhanced unemployment and food assistance benefits, the basics, food assistance benefits. Now the $600 federal booster has been estimated to have kept 10 million Americans out of poverty, but as you know, the $600 federal booster is scheduled to expire at the end of July. Now Moody's Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi and Harvard Economics Professor Raj Chetty said at a briefing with the Center on Budget and Policy Priorities this week that spending on Enhanced Supplemental Nutrition Assistance Program or also known as a SNAP program in addition to increased unemployment assistance will provide the most meaningful boost to the US GDP with a one-year perspective. So in short, in the next one year, if 
unemployment benefits are boosted, if the $600 booster continues, and if there's more funding towards these nutritional assistance program, that'll help the economy get back on track. That'll help more and more individuals. And also, there's no question that the House and the Senate need to see eye to eye and need to do something quickly in order to come up with a solution for extended unemployment benefits. We know the position of the Senate. We know the position of the House. But there was one encouraging sign, which is that the Speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, recently said she was interviewed on CNN's State of the Union and she specifically said we have to find a compromise because we must extend it. That's what Nancy Pelosi, Speaker of the House, said on CNN's State of the Union. And she was specifically talking about extending the $600 a week federal booster. She was talking about the extension of unemployment benefits that are due to expire at the end of July at the time I'm making this video. Now, as you know, the Republicans want a back to work bonus, want individuals to get back to work and the Democrats want to extend unemployment benefits. I've covered that elsewhere on my channel, so I'm not going to repeat that over here. But before I get into some surprising information about unemployment benefits that you probably weren't aware of. In fact, when I read this, I was pretty surprised myself. And by the way, that's what I believe makes a strong case for continued unemployment boosts as opposed to a stimulus check. So I have a question for you, for all of my subscribers, for all of my viewers. What do you think is a better option? Do you think extended unemployment benefits, specifically the $600 a week federal booster will be more valuable than a stimulus check? Or do you think a stimulus check will be more valuable than the $600 a week extension for the, for the federal booster for the unemployment benefits? Which do you think will actually help individuals more? I'd love to hear what you have to say. So click below click the comment section below and please tell me what you think. I'd love to hear from you. I'd love to engage in a healthy debate and I want to know what you think. I personally believe that the $600 federal booster, if it is extended in some way, shape or form, specifically to individuals who need it the most, that's what makes more sense to me. But I'd love to, again, hear from you and see what you have to say. So please sound off in the comment section below. Now, I'm going to give you a few pieces of information that are probably going to be surprising. And these, uh, these, this data actually makes the case for, a, uh, for an extension of the $600 a week federal booster. So recent research from the Chicago Federal Reserve finds that people receiving unemployment benefits are actually more likely to search for a new job. Now, again, I know the Republicans think that, hey, we need individuals to get back to work. The question is, where are the jobs? I'll get to that in just a second. But again, research from the Chicago Federal Reserve suggests that individuals who receive unemployment benefits are actually more likely to search for a new job than those who stop receiving aid. In other words, if you're receiving unemployment benefits, you're more likely to look for a new job. Very interesting. I'll link to that. Uh, I'll link to that article below from the Chicago Federal Reserve, so you can check it out for yourself. Also, a report from Harvard economists and Chetty is one of them, the economist that I mentioned earlier, also finds that a general fear of the pandemic, again, a general fear of the pandemic, not the state mandated shutdowns. That is what restricts business activity. That is what prevents individuals from going in getting a haircut. That's what prevents individuals from going out to eat. A general fear of the illness is the primary cause of reduced economic activity and job loss. Think about this for a second. The state shuts things down. The state has mandated social distancing guidelines, but it is the fear of the illness that keeps people away more than what the state and what the federal government said. That's what the that's what the report from Harvard Economist said. So I will link to that in the description below. So what this basically means is if the fear associated with this pandemic, with this illness goes away, things will start to get back to normal. We will start to resume our normal life because we want to. We don't need the state and the federal government to tell us that. We know that if we feel comfortable going out there, we know that if we feel that we're going to be safe going out there, then things will gradually start to get back to normal. That is that is quite significant. Now, also, the capacity to really restore economic activity without fundamentally addressing the health concern is limited. These are the words of the Harvard economist Chetty. As far as economic policy goes, mitigating the hardship of people who've lost the most is likely to be the most effective. So what he's basically saying is help should go to those who need it the most. But he did say that there's a public health safety aspect to this. And once that's tackled, that should allow all of the things to fall back into place gradually in our economy. Now let's go back to Moody's Analytics Chief Economist Mark Zandi. What Zandi said, and according to him, stimulus checks are among the least impactful forms of fiscal support projected to boost GDP one year out. In simple words, he thinks that the economy will not improve a year from today with just stimulus checks. 
he and this is what the Harvard economist Chetty said he adds that April stimulus payments helped lower income households recover in the short term by paying for things like food housing and households recover in the short term by paying for food housing and essential bills though businesses that benefited the most were primarily large online retailers such as Amazon ironic isn't it higher income households were more likely to save any stimulus funds that they received rather than spend it so individuals who had more money just ended up saving the money and individuals who had very little money or no money ended up spending the money on simple items on the basic things like food and living expenses so in his opinion in the Harvard economist's opinion it didn't really boost the economy it provided a simple form of sustenance if you will and nothing more so Chetty said what's the bottom line going forward we should be focusing on unemployment insurance and expanding safety net programs like snap fundamentally because those programs provide what he calls social insurance they mitigate economic hardship in a time of crisis now I know there are a lot of things that are not certain in the world that we live in I know there's a lot of anger there's a lot of frustration specifically with the government and specifically with this whole situation that has been thrust upon us through no fault of our own one thing is for sure the decisions that the government makes in the next few weeks are going to impact the American economy the American worker and the belief and the faith in government for a long time to come I know that a lot of us are struggling right now and are trying to get through the next few days and are trying to put food on the table and trying to keep the lights on my advice to you would be to try and learn new skills my advice to you would be to try and as best as you can once you weather this crisis try and improve economically try and create savings try and get better at investing so that we don't have to depend on the government going forward I know that everyone's struggling out there I know that a lot of individuals are suffering I feel for you I'm trying to help you with my channel and hopefully I've been able to give you some ideas to get through this this horrible crisis there is a short term and a long term aspect to this I do believe that the government should help those who need it the most in the short term that's what we depend on government for but in the long term I believe we need to be more professionally more financially independent which would which involves learning new skills getting better at what we do perhaps even changing careers so that we become indispensable for employers if some of us want to start our own business then by all means go ahead and start your own business but in the future we need to fundamentally re-engineer the way we've looked at our jobs the way we've looked at our place in in the world the way we've looked at our finances and the buffer that we create for ourselves the cushion that we create for ourselves must be greater going forward I hope I was able to give you some ideas in this video uh, I, I'd love to know what you think do you think the unemployment booster is going to be more important more relevant more useful than stimulus checks when it comes to your financial future when it comes to the GDP the American GDP the economy in the next one year which is essentially what this video was all about what this article was all about and what those economists were talking about thank you so much for watching if you're not an existing subscriber yet please click subscribe below please enable notifications so you get an instant update from me going forward and also if you learn something new please click the like button thank you so much I'll see you in the next episode of ignition time bye